Hello everyone, welcome back to Rolling Solo. My name is Adam Smith and today I'm excited to be unboxing Madeira Unintentional Malum Act 1. This is a game published by Succubus Publishing. It is a narrative driven game designed by Brooklyn Lundberg and developed by Alex Henson, Clayton Helm, and Brenna Munker. So it might be really hard to tell with the camera angle I've got going here is just how absolutely massive this box really is. It comes in at 20 pounds pounds, which you'll see why when we actually dig into it. But just before we do that, I do want to give you guys a disclaimer. This review copy was sent to me by the creator. Now, I'm really thankful because for a number of reasons. First off, it was individuals from this community here at Rolling Soul that actually contacted the creator on my behalf and threw my name into the hat, essentially, for a reviewer copy, hoping that I would get one so that I could do this showcase for the game. And sure enough, they contacted me and asked me if I'd like to have a review copy and take a look at it. And I was like, sure, why not? This is one I've had my eyes on for years. This Kickstarter has been in the works for quite some time, and I never got a chance to originally back it because I wasn't 100% sure if it would actually uh, materialize into something. But as I saw the photos come through and the updates on the Kickstarter moving along, and then finally started seeing unboxings from the actual creator, I got really excited very quickly and realized this was a passion project that is going to come to life, and even more so in the fact that they're currently moving moving product to the hubs to be sent to backers, which is also really cool to know that those that have actually invested uh, years ago and are waiting for this product to show up are going to be getting it really, really soon. So I wanted to make that disclaimer for you guys and also let you know that I'm definitely not being paid in any way, shape or form for uh, the showcase. Uh, if I ever was paid for any video on my channel, I would disclose that uh, using YouTube's option, but it hasn't happened to date. I am truly doing this as a passion and uh, I really am interested in seeing what Madara has to offer and hopefully helping you make an informed decision on whether or not you want it or not, or if you already have it, hopefully I can help you show you how to play it. What's also cool is a second announcement is I want to make mention of the fact that there will be a Kickstarter coming, again, a reprint for Madeira in the summer of 2019. So for those people that are interested in picking this up because you might have missed it the first time, which happened many years ago, then you've got a chance in the near future here to do that. So hopefully my showcase can help you in making an informed decision on whether or not you want to back the upcoming reprint. And also note that this rule book in this particular copy is the 1.0 version, and that's the rules that I'll be following through my playthrough. There will be a re-release of the rules with some additional FAQ type stuff as well as some enhancements to the rule book which will come I believe in the reprint of the Kickstarter uh, coming up but I'm not going to worry about trying to you know work between those two different iterations I'm just going to use what's in the box to keep things nice and simple and then of course if there's any rule changes you'll just reference that new rule book when you receive it if you happen to back the game so without further ado that was a long overview but I really thought most of that information was very necessary and now we're going to go ahead and dive in this thing. Normally I would flip the box over, but if I did that, I'd not only throw out my back, but I'd also probably damage the box, just flipping it over and probably everything inside of it. So I'm just not going to do that. I'm going to just open up the top here and take a look at what's inside. So be prepared to see a lot of content. So right after removing the top of the box, you're greeted by a ton of miniatures. Some are super large on the far right hand side and some are more average size on the left. I'm gonna now go into an in-depth view of each of these miniatures so you can see them up close and personal.
So after going through all of those miniatures, we're now going to take a look at all the contents in the box. And I'm not kidding, there is a ton of stuff here. I'm not going to talk the specifics of what I'm seeing. This is truly just going to be an unboxing. We'll get into all the rules and what everything looks like, what it means and all that kind of stuff, the iconography, everything like that. Once we actually get into the solo setup and the playthrough, for now we're just going to enjoy chewing through all this insane content. So first off, the first thing I'm seeing right off the bat that's grabbing my attention is this gigantic pile of what looks to be character cards. All right, so forgive me, there is a ton of these cards to go through, so I'm gonna to try to flip through them one at a time. Again, not really speaking to any of them in particular or about anything that you're seeing on the cards, just more so to show you the artwork and the layout of the different uh, individuals. I'm guessing these are the characters that we can play. And of course, we're gonna run into some enemies too. So I'm just gonna kind of flip through all of these so you can get a good idea as to what it looks like. Again, the artwork is really awesome uh, right off the top. I'm, I'm already really attracted to the artwork in general. And again, I'd seen all this stuff during the updates to the Kickstarter shutter as the years went on and then even more so in those recent unboxings from succubus publishing so that was really really cool to start seeing this thing come to life and this truly is a labor of love as i mentioned earlier um, there is a lot of content in this thing to rip through and some really cool ideas too that you'll see later on so i'm just going to keep on ripping through all this stuff here and i'll just let you guys enjoy the artwork on the cards Corpse Collector, Blighted Guardian. So many different things. I'm guessing these are all things that are gonna wanna kill us. <laughs> None of them look like friendly allies to me. Okay, so I'm gonna do a quick little rearrange here because this is a pretty big stack and I don't wanna lose them. I also have to remember where my first space was, so I hope I'm not going back through them again because that would actually be hilarious. I think I might be. Uh, Maybe not, maybe not. Oh, there we go, there's the beginning. Huh, one more to go, okay. So first off, I semi-organized some of the card stacks here that were inside this box. There's probably more hiding underneath these other books, and there's even some down the sides here as well. These stacks just keep getting larger and larger, but there's some cards here right off the top here that say stop, do not reveal cards in this deck until specifically instructed to do so. So again, during this unboxing, I'm not gonna show you guys anything that's spoiler-based. So large hidden card deck, medium hidden card deck, and small hidden card deck, all of those three are gonna be removed from the unboxing. They will not be opened. We're gonna continue on through. Now, I could go through all these cards, but what I think I'll do is I'll just keep on moving through the rest of the content in the box and we'll come back to these because this could actually take quite some time. And for those interested in actually seeing all those cards, I'll leave that towards the tail end of the video because there's just way too many of them. All right, so I believe I've removed all the cards out. There could be some surprises under some of these books as well. And there really isn't 70 packs of cards, but there's a lot. And there's certainly more than 70 cards. Uh, there's a ton here. So let's continue on with some of the smaller stuff we can get past fairly quickly. So first off, oh, look at that, another pack of cards. Not gonna be surprised. And this is gonna be the only game like this where you just keep pulling decks of cards out of different corners of the box. It's insanity how many stacks there are to the left here off screen. Um, you've got yourself some colored bases. So there's not too much to show here, really. Uh, but I just want to show you that there's a number of different colored bases likely to maybe, in my opinion, uh, and just guessing that these potentially show different levels or maybe some are for the heroes, some are for enemies, or maybe they're based on their uh, their level of difficulty. But we're not going to show those close up because they're not as exciting. But the dice packs are pretty cool. So let's take a look at what the dice have in store for us. So the dice for this particular game are actually quite nice. Uh, and there's different colors. They all represent different levels, essentially. So when you're using a particular weapon, it may ask you to use you know, a white die and a blue die. And they all have differences in terms of their numbers. So some of them have the lowest number being like a two, for instance, on the white die, whereas the blue die, the lowest number might be, I'm not actually 100% sure. This could be a six. If it's a six, that's pretty awesome. Oh, five. A four, I think that's a four. No, five. So yeah, they basically scale essentially. So when you're using particular weapons in the game, this is their way of scaling up the game as you go along. And it's all explained inside the rule book, but the dice are really, really cool. And not only have uh, just the number stated there, they also have a shield icon, a star and a book, which also represent different abilities and things that can trigger when you're rolling your dice. So essentially you don't need 
a die for every single condition or thing that's happening in your role. It can all be handled in one die roll, which is a good way to do this because it's such a beast of a game. Um, so that definitely knocks down the amount of dice that need to be included in the base set in order to satisfy all the different mechanics. So really cool. I like the dice. They're, uh, they're good quality and everything's kind of etched in nicely. I don't see any nicks or rips or missing like pips or anything like that. Like quality wise, pretty happy with all of that. So we'll move past the dice now. We'll talk about the ever exciting inclusion of Ziploc bags because when you get a game that is this large, Ziploc bags are awesome uh, because, well, you got a ton of stuff to separate. So for organizing, always nice to see. So the next thing that I really want to look at is the tiles to the right here. These tiles I know have a UV coating on them, which really makes them pop. So I'm going to take the wrap off of these and we'll go through them one at a time. So here are the tiles. This is just one stack of them. And I'm not even kidding. There's probably about 15 tiles per stack. So there's probably 30 tiles would be my guess in this game. And they're all double sided. So you're looking at about 60 unique you know, sides of tiles, which is just ridiculous. And you'll be able to create a number of different scenarios with this thing, of course, based on the campaign book. Well, let's go through these one at a time. So some of them are gonna have uh, areas, of course, I'm not gonna be able to speak to just yet because I haven't played it, uh, but they're gonna represent different, and most of us will be familiar with this type of uh, iconography in terms of terrain and things like that we have to deal with. Uh, but one of the coolest things with this, and this side doesn't have any UV spotting, but some of them do. And when they do, they look so cool. It just really makes whatever is the prime thing going on on that tile really pop it adds like another level of color which then matches the theme and just really bolsters the tile in general i really like that and that was one of the things that i saw in the unboxing that the uh, creator did and i was blown away that that was actually implemented into the tiles i think it's something that other people are going to look at and go we need to start putting these into our tiles to liven them up to really make specific elements of the tiles that are cool and some of the artwork and some of the features pop more Something that I think will be, or will catch on. Now, it may not be the first time it's ever been done, of course, uh, but it's just really cool. And obviously anything that kind of enhances a tile and makes it look a little bit more lively is a good thing because most are just straight up printed. Here's a tree on one side and on the other side, now again, I'm not gonna know what the heck I'm looking at, but this is what I mean by actual individual features on the tile popping out. So again, it gives that color. And of course it looks ridiculous when you have the light on it from an angle, but if you lay it flat down when people are actually looking at it and playing it, it actually looks perfect. It just, again, it draws your eyes to those particular things on the tile. So big fan of that. I probably won't gush about it too much more, but I'm probably gonna be ood and odd as I go along anyway. Here is a lake. So again, a focal point of the tile. And then the opposite side, this is nothing. So not all of them have something, but I thought it's worth just kind of going through them. Again, some of them are very subtle and other ones kind of are extremely obvious and pop out quite a bit. Flip this over to this side. Oh, that's cool. I like that. That's pretty awesome. So again, you can see the, the differences in the in the style of terrain and the locales and things like that, very interesting. Like you're obviously gonna be traversing through a number of really, really cool areas within Tradera. And uh, this is obviously giving you a good look at what some of them will look like, hopefully. So very, very cool that way. And of course, it's really good for any type of game that's story-driven narrative dungeon crawl type thing to have that going for it so that every time you're playing this, you feel very different in the locations that you're moving through and into. That looks like a very dangerous area. <laughs> Something that'd be hard to move through. I bet you that's some difficult terrain in general right there. That's cool. There's a huge... So it looks like all the water is bumped up. That's awesome. There's some subtle kind of gems up in the corner as well. I'm really liking this. This is really well done guys like really well done and, and a great idea again on that uv spotting like that is well thought out well thought out and also well used because i think if you had the whole tile popped with this uv thing it just wouldn't have the same effect but it really does draw the eye and i love that i think once you have a full sprawl of four or five of these in a map sitting on the table they're really going to look cool and uh, oh look at that you got some gems kind of hiding in there sparkling in the in the tile. So again, it looks much different when it's flat and there's not a lot of um, glare coming off the lighting I have above me. So I'm do doing my best to kind of show you where the UV spotting is with the lighting and also show you what it would look like if it was actually sitting on your table like this. I didn't flip that one over, but on the other side, there's a really cool side to this one too. I think those are all gems, I'm guessing. I don't know, there might be some type of shard or gem in this game that's really important. I immediately think of like Darkstone from uh, Shadows of Brimstone when I see stuff like that. So maybe there's something in the world that's, uh, you know, 
very, very powerful or useful. Oh, that's cool. So I'm guessing these are just, right. they might be pillars because they're actually hexagons. So I'm guessing those are pillars. I thought they were rocks for half a second, but they look like pillars to me. Oh, cool, you got yourself a bridge. And there's even UV spotting up on the, uh, way up there, just on the actual edge. Oh, that's really cool. I like that, I like that. Oh, I didn't show you the other side. Oh, that's nice. Check this one out. That's pretty cool. Nice UV spotting on all the treasure. So the treasure's showing up, there's UV spotting. Oh, that's so awesome. That just makes the tile. Oh, I'm loving this so far. Loving the art, liking the style of it. And this is only half the tile so far, guys. There's another stack right here I haven't even opened up yet. So again, just like all the different places that you're gonna be able to uh, check out this game. The other thing to note in the very bottom right hand corner is uh, you've got numbering. So just like any dungeon crawl, you're going to be able to easily go through and uh, be able to tell, you know, which tiles go where when you're setting up your scenarios. So that's pretty common these days and has been for quite a long time. Um, oh man, cannot get enough over the, the different environments. They're just so awesome. Like I, what I really like is that every tile has actual character. Uh, there's a lot of dungeon crawlers that have like tiles that are just there to fill a void. Like basically like, hey, here's a hallway tile. And you're just like, cool, I got a hallway tile. You throw it in a stack. It's just not exciting. Um, actually, Brimstone has a couple of those, uh, you know, and that's something worth mentioning. Like there's usually these unique rooms in Brimstone and then there's kind of like these separate, uh, you know, hallways that lead to another unique room. And I always just found like, if the game's just focused on the key rooms and had those, which is what Madeira seems to be doing, then it really then keeps you captured into the excitement of being in a new and unique tile and it offering different things. So I'm so far really happy that there isn't any like just boring tiles. Every single one of these tiles, I want to check out. I want to find out what's going on in it. I want to figure out why certain things are uh, important in that room versus other. It's just super cool. So that is the first stack. That's literally the first stack of tiles. There's one more to go through. Okay, here we go with the next stack. So more terrain to uh, to visit and explore. Oh my gosh, look at that. That's very cool. I don't think I've seen any locations looking like that yet. Wow. Still impressed, guys. Still impressed. Loving every single one of these sides of these tiles. Every single one of them impresses me so far. They're just all so unique and different. I mean, yes, some of them blend together, but it's like every once in a while, you just every second one I'm flipping over, I'm just like, that's something I haven't seen yet. Like, here's a rope bridge. Here's, I mean, we already saw the rope bridge, sorry, but like just different layouts. And this one here says there's elevation involved. It's got all kinds of markers for it. Ugh, too good, too good. Just so cool, so cool. Obviously a gigantic hole there that you don't want to be falling down. That's just nuts. So many tiles, so many tiles and so much to explore. We're probably three fourths of the way through maybe in the tiles, <laughs> just nuts. For those individuals that have backed this thing back when it first originally launched, you guys deserve massive, massive respect for putting your money into the campaign and actually allowing this thing to come to fruition because without your actual backing, this thing would not have even happened. Look at this one, it's glossy everywhere. That's crazy because maybe it's just a full water tile or something. But like, again, like that's the crazy thing about Kickstarter is some of these projects literally would never happen. Some of them could because some uh, creators are able to create some smaller games that would actually be able to be published and sent off to retail. But some of these monster games like Gloomhaven and Madeira, like people wouldn't even allow that stuff through the retail chains if it wasn't for the first, uh, you know, stop at Kickstarter and getting kind of the game's name out there and proving it's you know, that it's successful and something people want. So again, you you guys deserve, for those of you that were backers, definitely deserve a huge round of applause for allowing this thing to uh, to actually be created because I wouldn't even be looking at this if it wasn't for you. So thank you for that. Very, very happy. Just craziness. Just never ends. All these tiles to check out, everything just in like another unique place, just on top, like just too many of them, too many. <laughs> Ugh, so good tracks here, the minecart. 
Yeah, I like the subtle use of it too. Like again, it's not over the top. They're not doing it on, you know, they're doing it on most of the tiles, but it's for the things that really matter. You know, the things that you really want to look at. It's just, ugh, such a good idea. Love the water too. All right, we did it, guys. We got through all the tiles. Now I haven't counted up how many there are. My guess is there's about 30 there. That, and so 60, as I mentioned earlier. Time to take a close look at the Madeira Adventure book, which is ridiculously huge and probably accounts for a good five to 10 pounds. I'm guessing it's possibly, yeah, it's in there. It is super heavy, like super heavy. Cannot even describe the thickness of this thing. Look at how many pages are in this book. It's ridiculous. Now, what I'm gonna try to do is I'm gonna try to open this thing up within the box. You can see this is not the only uh, book inside of here, again, which goes back to the weight of this thing. Um, so I'm just gonna move these ones off to the side here. We're gonna open this up so you guys can actually see some of the artwork and the contents inside of the book. Again, hopefully the lighting uh, will kind of work with me here as I go through. The binding was a really good idea. I like that uh, because of how absolutely massive the book is. You kind of need the book to be bound. But like, there is a lot here, a lot. So you got different days, different scenarios, how you're gonna set things up. All of this, I'm gonna try to sum up uh, during the solo setup, of course. And then you're gonna get into a similar situation with seeing um, some things within the book looking very similar. But I think what they've done is they've color coded the top section of this book to represent different things. And I don't know what those are off the top of my head just yet, but basically uh, you can see like boss fights, for instance, might be, uh, and there's actually a wilderness way, uh, icon way up in the top right hand corner and things like that. So like, again, it's all probably represented in color coding. Uh, but this is the general gist of the layout of the rule book. So there's a lot to read. So that's one thing that you have to be ready and prepared to do. Now, this is what's really cool about it. You like the best way to describe this book is that these scenarios are going to have large amounts of narrative because it's a narrative driven game. So there is going to be an element to reading a two to four page or one page, depending on the scenario, worth of content before actually making a decision or before moving into a scenario because it's very narrative driven. You know, there's a lot of board games out there that are like, here, begin this scenario. This is all you get is one paragraph. In this game, you're getting narrative that's literally so throughout the entire thing and it's really important to actually pay attention to the world itself and one thing I'll mention guys is actually if you want to understand the world of Madeira and more so about the universe the actual uh, creator of the game has a YouTube uh, channel which you can go check out and they have videos that will describe to you basically how Madeira and Earth interact and there's some really interesting uh, background or lore in this particular game that's also worth becoming accustomed to if you're gonna play the game so that the stories are even more uh, you know, impactful for you when you're playing through the game. So I'm not gonna go through every page of this thing because literally it is ridiculously huge. Uh, we'll just move past this thing and we'll focus more so on it when we actually get to the solo setup and the playthrough. And we'll focus on the sections that matter because most of it could run into spoiler territory, of course, getting into some of those late, late scenarios. So with that one out of the way, the next book you're going to see is a book called Unintentional Malum Act 1. And this is the crawl book. So this is going to be the, I just want to play a one-off scenario. I do not want to do a campaign. That is my understanding here. So basically this will allow you to set up for crawl books. Now I could be wrong here. There could actually, this could actually have a tie into um, the campaign as well. So don't quote me on that one. I might be actually wrong there. But one thing I can say and be 100% certain is they do the loot system and the hidden information system so much better in this game than any other dungeon crawler I've seen so far by actually hiding information on these pages. So for instance, if you're playing a watery exit, you don't see what happens with the rewards. You don't see the loot. All of it's hidden behind this, uh, you know, kind of coding basically that enables you to not be able to read it. And you have to use this decoder, which is included in the the game this one right here and you actually put this red decoder over top certain sections and then those sections are readable 
So that's actually how they keep you from, and also prevent you from reading ahead. And this is something that actually when I was playing uh, Gloomhaven that I really wish would have been implemented, and it has been implemented in the way of an app, which I do use on iOS to hide all the, you know, the, all the information in the rooms that you haven't moved into, but this is really a step in the right direction because it's kind of sad when you're setting up a scenario and you're reading about, you know, how you need to win, here's the win condition of what you need to do, and then if the rewards are just labeled out here and not hidden, you're you're kind of spoiling things for yourself even if you're trying to avoid it so this is a really good way to avoid that i'm really happy that they implemented that they do it like crazy throughout the book with all the choices that are happening You'll learn different things depending on how you, you know, you might go to the road most traveled and it says here the red objectives this area, blues here, red totem, green totem. So depending on which totem you're hitting, you're reading a certain thing. It's just awesome. I love that. There's always that sense of discovery and exploration and that's what really is cool in these types of narrative driven games. So next up, we've got a book called The Blight Terror Bounty Pack Reward. Now, if I remember correctly, this might be a Kickstarter thing. This might be something that was added in as part of the Kickstarter. So don't quote me on me understanding this, but this might be one of those like kind of like off side quest type scenarios for people uh, as a kind of a thank you, I believe is what they did there. So there is that one, some really cool artwork as well. So another book to go through. Then we get here to the diagram book. So here's another book to go through. This is literally gonna take you through all the different diagrams. So basically, how this book works essentially is so that you don't know what tiles are going to be added to your scenario as you explore them. You might be in a particular scenario and it says, put out two tiles to start, and that's all you're, you know of. But eventually, maybe in one of those decoded red areas in that giant book we just looked at, it will say once you reveal it with a decoder, go to your diagram book and take a look at page you know X, whatever that is, and then go ahead and add this extra tile here to the two that you already had out there. So basically it's a way to reveal tiles without you knowing what they are beforehand. Again, going that extra mile to keep things secretive and exciting as you progress. Something I really, really appreciate. Then we get to the actual rule book. Now, I don't know if I actually called that giant book the rule book. That was probably a mistake. This is the rule book. It's not as huge. It's still big. It's a large print book, but uh, certainly nothing compared to that scenario book. This one comes in at 53 pages. So if you want a general idea of how the rules look, I'll kind of flip to the beginning. So here's the contents and introduction section for the book. Here's a summary of the components all laid out. Uh, next up, you've got the component list, so you can double check that everything arrived with your copy. Choosing your game mode, this is when I was talking about crawler adventure, so depending on which way you want to go. Um, I'm likely going to jump straight to the adventure mode so that we can actually learn about the campaign and skip past the crawl mode. Um, and then you've got the two different setups for both, which we'll be going over. Adventures continued. This is basically the gist of how the actual rulebook is laid out. So that gives you a good idea roughly of how that's laid out. It's about, uh, it's, a, it's a decent sized book overall. So I got some reading to do for sure uh, going forward. So this is gonna be one that's not going back in the box for me. And here is the actual game board for Madeira. Now my understanding here is that this is the main game board and maybe in the future, things will expand upon this game world. It might expand off to the left, I'm guessing, or maybe even the right potentially. Uh, but basically these are all the different areas you can explore and they all have their own different names like Grey Haven, the Far Edge, um, the city up here. There's all kinds of places. Again, I'm not familiar with any of these locations just yet, but what I will do is zoom in on them really quick so you can actually see them up close. So here's a quick look at the very top or northern part of the game map. And so there's a bunch of cities as you can see up there as well as some coastal area off to the east. And we head a little further south into more of a mountainous region where there's still a number of cities to explore in different areas. We're getting closer down to Greyhaven and to the southern end of the map at this point. And finally, we made it to the very bottom of the map, which has the Crimson Lake, and it has this farmlands area over here, as well as a spire of the trials, and that's kind of the southern area down here at the bottom. So that is, from my understanding, the full view of the map. Now, I thought this was the only thing at the very bottom of the box, but there's actually tokens as well. So underneath of the large map of the area, we also have a ton of tokens to punch. I'm not gonna go through all of these. There's tokens all over the place, but I'm noticing that some of these actually have UV spotting on them, surprisingly. 
So some of these ones, like the ones that have to do with water, still have that spotting on it, which is cool. Um, you got a whole bunch of tokens here. Can't even get into the description of what I'm even looking at, but courage, disease, haste, poison. They look like a bunch of statuses, essentially. Uh, you've also got discardable tokens here for purple bulbs and vows and summons and heals and all kinds of stuff that's going to be used to basically keep track of things within the game. So that's the first set. Now, if I flip this over, I'm guessing the backside has... Oh, look at that. Oh, no way. The actual tokens themselves have UV spotting on them. Are you kidding me? Okay, now I'm really impressed. I thought it was just for the tiles, but I'm not joking. There's actual spotting on these uh, tokens as well. There's ones that actually have that pronounced look to them. That's really cool. That really bolsters regular cardboard tokens to like the next level. So there's this always been this thing for me when I've been playing board games where I've thought cardboard is kind of eh, and if I can try to bling it out or get a component that turns it into plastic or something more 3D looking or uh, something more tangible I can hold um, is really cool because just a flat uh, tile is never that exciting. But this actually makes tokens a lot more exciting. And if this was done more so across other games, I'd be very happy with that. Um, but it makes them just look better than they are essentially so like this one for instance has like a knife going through someone's hand and the knife itself the blade itself is actually uh you know you can see it on the on the board that's just really cool so i'm i'm really impressed by that so let me try to get this thing out of the shot here for the next token board there's actually four of them so here's another one again this could get into spoilers because we're talking with some of these gigantic enemies some of these are characters more terrain based stuff health obviously so and again uv spotting on ones and, and some of these character ones even have uv spotting on them so just nuts just nuts really happy with the production value of this thing very 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 happy that looks awesome Okay, so that is the next tile. I'm trying to do this without punching out all of them. This one up here has a ton of UV spotting on it because it's a bunch of water and uh, maybe what looks like swamp water or something. So these top sections have a whole bunch. Um, so that's really cool. And then more and more monsters to fight. Flip this over on the back side. Now, my understanding, I don't know if this is true or not, but this last set of tokens could be all represented already by the miniatures or maybe these are in addition to like these are bosses or individuals to come across that aren't represented in um, miniature form so i could be wrong on that so you have to kind of bear with me i could be completely off there but um again more uv spotting where it makes sense and, and not all of them have it all right so now we're gonna go through some cards and again i'm not going to stop for any super long length of time in order to show you all these because there's just too many of them to go through but i do want to give you an overview of kind of the look and feel and also show you that some of these cards have uh oh no i thought there was uv spotting on that one but there is not if there is on some of these cards that would be epic um, there's also kind of a reference at the very bottom of each card, like it's an uncommon relic or if it's a weapon, just a regular weapon, things like that. So you'll see those as we go through. Sometimes there's multiple of weapons and other times there's literally just one. Some pretty crazy designs and there's a lot of packs to go through, that's for sure. So this is going to be the first pack. Got a couple uncommon weapons there. Some huge bladed weapons as well. That is the first pack. If I flip this over to the other side, I don't know if there's any difference in what I'm seeing. Now, this could be an upgrade type thing. I don't really know. Or maybe it's just more information on the same card. Yes, so I'm not too sure the differences per se just yet, but I'm guessing I'm gonna be learning that soon enough. So basically all the stuff we went through is exactly the same in terms of weapons. So that is the first deck of cards done. Many more to come. The back of these cards say mundane consumable, and there's a whole bunch of them. Oh, there's other stuff in here too. Mundane consumable. Oh, there's different actual pictures in the back of some of these. Interesting. Lots of mundane things. I'm guessing these are potentially the worst, I guess. I'm not too sure the different levels just yet, but uh, these are obviously items that you can acquire. Some ability stuff, defensive stuff, bottled blessing cards. But these are the mundane, so I'm guessing they're the most common and easiest to find. I just dropped that one on the floor. Magic Balm. There's quite a few of each of these because they're obviously mundane. Um, cool ones though, throwing knives, juice box. Juice box, nice. So many cards. This is crazy. I can't believe how many cards are in this game. I think we got six more decks to go through of the standard size cards. 
I believe my future is going to be a lot of organization of all these cards. There's so many. These are all rare ones. So rare armors and accessories and relics. Oh my goodness, so much stuff. So I've got a ton of organizing to do across these decks. And honestly, that's one of the first thing the game tells you to do is basically go through all your cards and separate them into different decks. And again, for individuals wondering like, how would you figure out where what goes where and how this all works? There is a fantastic video created by the creators of the game themselves. I believe it's Succubus Publishing is the YouTube channel uh, where you can go and actually take a look at some videos that will show you how to play the game. Also, it shows you, like I mentioned way earlier in the video, the lore, the background of the actual universe itself. Itself. It also talks about how to split these decks out essentially and what you should be looking for when you're setting up the game. A lot of really useful information to be had there. We are now done at three packs going on to the fourth. We have some more rare weapons mixed in here. We also have some uncommon consumables, some uncommon core cards, armor cards. I still don't know what an uncommon core is. I don't know if that's like a different or not maybe that's like the standard thing you have on your character who knows some really cool weapons in this one though like that's one thing i really like is a very unique system in terms of different items that you can wear again based on the theme because it's all kind of present in that theme and it's it's really cool like it just adds a real interesting element so i do like the artwork i haven't mentioned that yet about these cards but card wise the artwork on the weapons is very good like every time you look at one it it does represent itself quite well. And it also is easy to read the cards. There's not too much going on in the cards that's overwhelming. So I think that's a plus as well. So that's another deck of cards down. We should move on to the next. The Corpse Collector Consumable. That sounds wonderful. Uh, okay, so there's backs on the, every single one of these is changing. There's tons of these cards. So I don't know what they all are, but there's a whole bunch. So let's flip these around to this side. We can actually see them and kind of go through them. Core cards again, Charm of Ash. Some of these look so awesome. Quick arrows, magic frags, swords, wands. Literally anything you could possibly think of in terms of stuff to wear and weapons to kill things. Like this game's got it in droves. So much. It's going to be fun to actually break this all into the different, uh, you know, organized, organized piles and see them all there so it'll make a lot more sense once i've got them all spaced out but right now it's just a crazy pile of resources and weapons and armor so much so much stuff it's nuts and the next deck of cards we got consumables all kinds of common consumables common cores common armors common everything so i don't know if common is is better or worse than mundane mundane sounds worse to me so maybe these are more of the average type things that you'd find within the world. So very interesting artwork as well as uh, items that you can find. Nice. Hidden piercings of protection. Those are always useful. Always useful. So many, so many cool. It's. It, it, I'm gonna actually wanna go through this later on and just stop on the artwork and kind of enjoy the different cards. I am going through this at a pretty quick clip, but I think if I took any more time on these cards, we this video would end up being like three hours long. Plus, there's a little element of like the nice to surprise of just not knowing what's coming, so I don't want to show too, too much. More of the mundane. Some armor, t-shirts, accessories, relics, tons of relics, weapons, weapons galore. Oh my goodness, so many weapons. Oh my gosh. Cool, the shields in there too. That's a pretty standard pack of cards, to be honest, in terms of weapons and stuff like that. So sometimes there's two of them. Like it seems like the mundane items and the common items actually have, um, you know, doubles of everything at times. So that's, you can tell that, you know, you can have more than one obviously, but not, I don't believe on the same character, but it's cool that you're able to, uh, it's kind of similar to Gloomhaven in that way where you have a couple of some of the common stuff so that you can pick up things as you need it. But uh, geez, the amount of cards, this is crazy. This is the last standard deck to go through. For all the backers out there waiting for this game to arrive, you've got some work ahead of you in terms of organization and just the joy of going through these cards because there is so much to look at. So your investment was well worth it, it seems, based on what I'm seeing here. So you're gonna definitely have lots and lots and lots to, to rip through. So we got magic arrow cards and chance. So these are gonna probably all be arrows, that's cool. So it's gonna allow from variation with the ranged weapons. As long as, and you got some other weapons in there as well. Ugh, so much cool stuff to get. 
And of course, a lot of this stuff is going to show you really. So this is another thing I didn't mention earlier on, but see these little symbols for the dies, uh, and sometimes dice because there's two of them. Those are telling you the color dice that you're rolling. So again, when I was talking about that earlier on the unboxing, is like how do you know what you're rolling for weapons? They're very easily shown on the uh, the actual cards themselves. So that is going to do it for all the standard size cards. Let's move into the mini ones. So there's a bunch of cards that actually relate back to the different levels of your character from my understanding. These might be abilities. So again, I could be totally wrong. This could also be the different ways in which you level up your character and how you level them up. So you're going to get particular abilities that are going to be, uh, you know, boosting up your character. You've got some pips here on the side that are representing something that I'm unfamiliar with just yet. Could be a leveling system based thing. Uh, but lots of them to go through. So I'm not going to go through every single, single one of these because there's actually a ton of them, like literally a ton of them. And we'll find out more during the solo setup uh, what they actually do. But there is two different colors in this one pack. And we got assemblage. And you got some levels here represented on the cards as well. So that's kind of why I was saying... I believe these are abilities based on your character leveling up, so that's my assumption. So that is the first mini pack, and I imagine we'll see a couple mini packs that are similar to that coming up. And sure enough, yep, we got another set of cards here. This one actually has three. It looks like it might finish off. The other one oh, it goes up to level four, actually. Okay. Cool. So a lot more ability cards, and again, I'm not too sure if they actually are called ability cards in this one or not, but I won't go through every single one of these, but a ton of them. Ton of them. That is another deck of cards down. We'll take a look at the next one. So this deck of cards appears to be a little bit different. We got combatant loot here on the back. I'm showing the back of the cards for now. Some abilities that are likely passive to heroes, maybe. Uh, Marshall. Oh, and then we get right back into those cards again, finishing off the other ones we already opened up. So again, I'll skip past these because reading all these would just be not an effective use of time during this unboxing. But I will show you guys these ones up close. So this is actually pretty cool. Different art on the cards. Looking pretty good. And some loot. So I'm, I'm guessing those are for coins. Pretty awesome. Sure enough, here is more loot cards. Just a whole bunch of them. Tons, 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 tons. All different values. We're getting up to like 14 now. That's quite a bit. And then back into the cards themselves again. Now, I don't know what these represent. I don't know if they represent... Oh, it could be initiative. I think that's what those are for. I think those cards... Yes, so they're initiative cards. These are the cards you use when you're building out the initiative track in the game. Combatant loot is there all the way through. So that is that mini deck. And now we're seeing some upgrade cards. I don't know if we've seen these before or not. We got rare upgrades, gatekeeper upgrades, rare upgrades, uncommon. I'm guessing we're going to see some common ones, maybe water ones. Interesting. So I don't know what these cards all entail, but they're certainly certainly different. So it'll be interesting to see how these affect the game world. This Maybe these are the gems. Maybe these are the things that are... Uh, coded in UV um, coding in the in the that I was talking about when I was kind of saying jokingly that they were like Darkstone. Maybe that's essentially what those are. That's pretty cool if that's the case because it actually ties in quite nicely with the cards. And the final pack of mini cards here has some more upgrade cards which we've already pretty much covered quite extensively and some initiative cards to flush out the rest of the enemies in the game. So we'll just quickly take a look at some of those. Art works really really cool on these initiative cards first off which I really like. Some of them are doubled up though so I'm not too sure why that is but uh they look really good. And then, of course, you got all the crazy different uh, upgrade cards. So that's going to do it, guys. That actually is going to complete the unboxing of Madeira. So at this point, you've seen all the contents of the box. You've seen all the miniatures. The only thing you haven't seen is this promo box that I have for Madeira that came as part of the Kickstarter. I may tag it onto the end of this video, or I may not, depending on whether or not I want to include it, or if this video's time has already gone too far. Hopefully, this gives you a really good in-depth look at what to expect in the box, especially if you were one of the amazing Kickstarter backers that brought this project to life. Thank you so much because without your guys actually doing that, investing that time and uh, also money into the project, then uh, this thing may not have actually uh, come to fruition as, as well as it did. So it looks like a really good production and now we got to see whether it's a good game. So thank you guys so much for watching. Can't wait to see you in the showcase and as always keep on rolling solo.